name is Chris Robinson. I'm, uh, <clears throat> among other things, the artistic director of the Ottawa International Animation Festival. Uh, I also write on animation, authored some books. It's kind of a gut, uh, you go with a gut feeling, um, but I, for me, I've always tried to find something that has a soul, which is, I know that's a pretty general, but something that feels kind of honest and urgent that there's an idea there, um, that it's moving you in some way, not necessarily a pleasant way either, all the time. Um, it's, you know, something that feels a little bit different and original, because um, you see so much stuff that's, uh, it's just copycat, you know, it's kids trying to get jobs in the industry and they're just making bad copies of like Jerry's Game or something like that and or, or making things they think are funny but are clearly they're following some kind of uh, manual or process of, of comedy and what's what they're producing to me isn't funny. It's not, it's not, it's just not coming from a place that you feel they've experienced. There's something forced about it. So. To me, it's, it's just looking for something that feels, has this kind of urgency or, you know, somebody's got to get it out of their system. Um, but, you know, there's compromise along the way. I think in general, I've, because I didn't come from a painting or drawing background and just never, that was never my thing. So when I came in to the festival like 25 years ago, I think, yeah, I looked more at what are they, what are they saying? more than, than how. So I would say that I put the idea above the technique that it, if the camera work is, I mean, a perfect example was J.J. Villard's Son of Satan, made around 2000. This is distorted soundtrack, um, kind of ugly, punky drawings, not particularly well animated, but just all packaged together. There was something kind of special and, and original about it. Um, you know, and there have been things, the one film I've come to again and again as an example of a beautiful technique but nothing else going on would have been Alexander Petrov's The Old Man in the Sea, which is beautiful oil paint on glass technique using his fingertips and, I mean, it's amazing. But for me, the adaptation of, of the Hemingway novel that it was based on was just really weak and poor. And, and it seemed secondary to the technique, so, you know, that didn't interest me and we didn't take it and people weren't happy. But, but you know, it's not to say I discount technique entirely, obviously, but, uh, but to me it's, it's just an idea or what it's generating in me, a feeling. I mean, it is a personal thing to a degree. I mean, I think that's another aspect of, uh, of programming. Um, that you are responding to films that it's your interest in something might be reflecting what's going on in your life at the time. You know, some themes or ideas, something that appeals to you. And then if you saw that film maybe five years later, maybe you'd have a different reaction. So I think there is a personal thing, you know, a connection you're looking for when you're selecting. I mean, if it's personal, like, well, I don't like this person, it's not, no. It's certainly not like that. But, there, um, but there's a selection. Pro it's not just you. There's, no. There's it's, a selection committee. I mean, there, there's, there's people involved. With it. It's not just your decision and your decision alone. Yeah, I mean, I have the first say and I have the final say over, over what gets screened. But I take a lot more input from my colleagues than people well imagine. I mean, if I was only going to, I've said it before, if, if I was only going to pick the films that personally really resonated with me, we might have like a 15 minute for film festival, you know? You have to make compromises. Um, so I, yeah, I rely a lot on, you know, it really is more of a team effort and, uh, than people imagine. But I'm also very visible and out there as a writer or just outspoken. So I think people easily respond to that as well. I think, I think overall the quality is probably just as high as it was in you know, the early mid-90s when, when I came onto the scene. Um, but yeah, there's just so much more. Like, my first year in Ottawa, there were 750 entries, and that was over a two-year period when Ottawa was still biennial. 
And then, you know, today, now it's 2,500 films a year coming in. So I think it's, it's, there's more bad stuff being made, but I still think the overall quality is still there. It's just, you, you've got to work to get to it a little more now. Well, you know, when you're, when you're sitting around watching the 2,000 submissions or whatever, you're, you know, you want short stuff after a while. I, I don't know if it's overall become longer. I mean, there is that tendency, you're seeing more and more people wanting to make features. So I don't know if that's making short films longer because I do, you know, people are now, that wasn't the case in animation before. Like in live action, short film was your calling card to make a feature. That was never, you know, people in animation were making short films because they wanted to make short films. And I th think that's changing a little bit where there is more of an eye now that, uh, of, you know, making, working towards a feature. Um, I don't know though if they're, if they're necessarily longer. Oh, I think that that could be the, you could make that case for a lot of short animation, not just students, but more established animators as well. That, uh, yeah, to, and, and, and yeah, I think in school it's to challenge them, like, look, and we're only going to give you three and a half minutes or five minutes and really, uh, you know, push them to, uh, to be more efficient or effective. It seems to be the same school. I mean, you know, I, I have that bias more towards the independent side, people who are making, trying to make a work of art for themselves sort of thing, you know, about individual expression, and I think all the schools should just be allowing that rather than... I think there's a danger with these vocational places where you're training kids for, you know, a job at a specific studio or something. Like they're only really learning one way of doing things and if that industry changes then they're kind of screwed. I just think a fuller art education is going to benefit everybody. Um, but it seems, I don't know, I mean, it's, you see more schools, but they're still consistent, they're still the same schools that are making consistently interesting work. If it's RISD or CalArts, uh, Royal College of Art, and uh, NFTS in the UK, and Japanese schools. Um, so I don't know, the stuff is, is still strong, but... Uh, I think my concern is how many of these people, you know, you'll see some fantastic student films and then that's it. In some cases you never hear from these people again. I mean, even somebody like J.J. Villard again made Son of Satan, got hired at DreamWorks to work on uh, Shreks or something. I mean, he really hasn't made an independent film again since then. And, and that's a bit sad that he, he kind of got swallowed up by that. Well, I think, I mean, I think, that, you know, those old days of... Uh, are long gone where there was that sense of either you're going to go industry, you know, get yourself a full-time job at a studio or something, or you're going to go the starving artist route. And I think it's changed so much that, that the gap between those two worlds has uh, decreased to a, a huge degree where it, it's more and more possible. You see so many boutique studios, I don't know, Headgear, or Headgear Film Technarna, Global Mechanic, who are doing a combination of independent work and, and doing uh, commercials. And, um, so it seems, I mean, even independents like uh, Andrea Sacade, I mean, he's done TV work. Uh, Koji Amir has done TV and commercials. So I think it's Joanna Quinn with the, the toilet paper commercials. So I think there is a, you know, there is a possibility to survive more. And, and have your foot in both worlds as well. Um, beyond that, I don't know, like you know, I don't know how the funding is. In you know, in different countries, you know, Canada, it's pretty good. If you uh, just want to go the indie route, and you see people managing to survive. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, I I'm not a big. I mean, we're already seeing more and more, and it's, I find it a bit, I understand it, but I, you know, I'm still struggling to deal with the short filmmakers who are making films that are too long. And it's like, if you can barely handle that, and you're jumping into the feature world, I, I don't know, it strikes me a lot of people doing it for the wrong reasons, that they, they want to be taken, there's this, 
they want to be taken more seriously or something, at, at, and they'll get into real film festivals and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I think we're definitely going to see more, and we're already seeing more, but the quality is, is really not... You know, in Ottawa, we generally have five spots for features, and, and it's a battle every year to find, at least for me, five films that I can live with. I think festivals have this, this sort of multi-purpose. I mean, the, the original goal of all these ASIFA festivals, Annecy, Ottawa, Zagreb, Hiroshima, was to promote the art of animation, which is a big, loaded, vague term. Um, and, you know, that was to bring it to a wider audience, to show people, I mean, you know, it's more an issue in North America where people just think animation is this gag-ridden, you know, cartoons, light, light entertainment. Um, so it's always been the goal of the festivals to, to sort of challenge that and, and to educate audiences who don't know any better because they can't find this sort of stuff anywhere else. You know, it's not on TV for the most part. It's not in cinemas. Um, and, I mean, that stuff is online, but you have to know where to look for it. So there's that aspect, and I think there was, there's always just been a communal aspect within animation that it was, you know, animators are a little bit socially dysfunctional to a degree and hibernate all year alone working on their projects and, and a festival is, uh, is their time to come out of their shell for a few days and meet like-minded people uh, from different cultures, have the sh you know, who have the same interest and, and uh, you know, I, I, that's something I don't think like YouTube or Vimeo or ever, you, you're never gonna lose festivals because this social, uh, fun atmosphere of a festival, you can't, uh, you know, just having that direct human contact. Yeah, you see, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff like that where I find myself looking, you know, they're, sometimes they're, they're just going for such a realistic look. You're just like, why, I don't know, why are you doing this in animation? Um, or uh, another tendency I've noticed is these sort of animated documentaries where people are taking existing audio and, uh, and then animating to it, but sometimes they're just, the visuals are just, just sort of literally translating, I guess, the, the audio. And is, you're just like, what, again, what's the point of this? It's just like a rate, everything is in the audio that's, that's making it exciting, not the visuals. So yeah, I think certainly, uh, I don't know if I, I mean, uh, Animal Lisa, I, I did kind of like in a way, I liked the way they used the stop motion. I think it fit with, with, the, uh, with the theme, with the themes of the, of the, uh, the work. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, it's certainly, uh, I certainly get a bit, yeah, miffed when I see stuff that, yeah, it's, you're, you're just wondering why you're using animation here. But I see that too in the, you know, in the industry when I, I don't know why, it always comes into my head when I think of like Pixar's monsters. And there was, this, there was a big hype about the, the realism of the, of the monster's hair and the way it blew in the breeze or something. I'm just like, well, I can do that with my hair. Without all, I just didn't understand. Like, you're, you, you can do anything. You have this, these technologies. You can just break all the rules and do anything. Why the hell do you want to just make copies of, of the existing world? Like, it's, how, how boring is that? I think it's, it's more, uh, it's like, really? We made it? How do we keep making it? <laughs> um, you know, we're going to uh, look back to the past a bit. Um, we're going to show for the first time all the grand prize winners since 1976 and bring a few of the grand prize winners into town, like Caroline Leaf and Igor Kovalyov, Koji Amamira, and uh, have a few parties and things. Um, but I don't think we'll play it up too much, looking past, you know, just continue to keep going forward. And, Working on, you know, with the stories or whatever you're doing, that take it from, do what you know, what you've experienced, you know, as, as little as that might be at that time. Um, 
also to see as many films as possible. I think that's a problem I see at some schools um, where kids are not being fully exposed to a wide range of work. Um, so I think, again, that's where festivals play an important function. But, you know, just seeing there's so much diversity out there and you owe it to yourself uh, to, to see as, as much of it beyond just the doors of, of Hollywood and, and sort of mainstream stuff. I think too, I think that they get, there must be a lot of pressure where they're making stuff to please, like maybe a teacher or parents or whatever. And I think, you know, really it comes, even festivals, um, they, they should be making it for, for themselves. And, uh, you know, try and satisfy yourself. Doesn't mean you don't take input from other people, but, you know, do it for yourself first.